Hey there, do you guys remember this project? And do you remember how this project ended? Well, today I would like to make it, but better. The biggest issues with the last one was one, the wood was exposed to water, so it got moldy at the top. The second issue was the like the front of the glass got all like cloudy and stuff, which might be unavoidable. We're gonna find out today. I'm going to take the things that I learned from that and the mistakes that I made, and I'm going to learn from them and apply the new techniques to a new version. So uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get started. Okay, so here's the aquarium. I'm being very risky by holding it like this, and I don't trust myself, but that's fine. This should be a good, um, you know, size to work with and kind of area. I think it'll, it has enough room to where it's, you know, I can do what I want, but also not too big that it scales it up. Cause I really like, and I did this with the last one. I want to keep the scale like small, like all the plants and hardscape stuff kind of small because I really enjoy that look. Instead of kind of adding a permanent rain chamber this time, I want to kind of build one that will sit on top of it. That way, you know, I can, remove it for maintenance or, you know, adjust water flow easier, just whatever I need to do. So I think that's the first thing I'm gonna do is build the actual rain chamber and I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do it. But the way I did it was I started by taking some measurements of the container and transferring that onto a sheet of polycarbonate. Then after transferring the measurements, I used a ruler and cut along the polycarbonate. After making the first cut, I repeated this a few more times to get the correct size. Okay, so here we are, the polycarbonate's cut. So you can see, basically just overlaps and sits on this edge, which is what I wanted. It does stick over a little bit, so I'm, I'm gonna go over this with some sand papier and just make sure that it's all nice and smooth. Right, so my plan from here to make sure it doesn't like, you know, slide around and do that. I'm gonna like up in here, kinda in these corners, I'm gonna cut some more little pieces of polycarbonate. I'm just gonna slap them on there, that way, you know, it catches and it doesn't do that. Luckily I have some extra pieces over here. Cool thing about polycarbonate is it's super easy to cut. I mean, these pieces, you know, if you bend it, it doesn't break, it just bends. So that, that's the difference. If you're ever doing a project like this and you are trying to get some kind of um, like plexiglass, go for polycarbonate. Cause the, the polycarbonate, again, like you can bend it, you can cut it. Um, you can even use like a table saw or anything. As long as the blade has a lot of teeth, you should be fine. But with acrylic, acrylic, they're basically as strong as each other, except the difference is polycarbonate isn't as brittle. Acrylic is like super brittle, so you know, if you try to bend it or cut it, like it will just crack and shatter, and this stuff will just bend or you know, chip a little bit. But overall, this stuff's a lot stronger, it's a lot easier to work with, so I recommend using polycarbonate if you ever have a project like this. But yeah, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut those little pieces. Um, or actually, I'm gonna sand this and then I'm gonna cut the little pieces, and then I gotta build up a glass rim around it. So, uh, you know. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get that done. Okay, so our little squares are cut, these little guys. Yeah, so these, I'm just gonna put them in the corners, like uh, like that. I made these little little markers in the corners of where these need to go, so I'm just gonna, I think attach them with super glue. The only downside to super glue is it'll fog up and get all gross on the polycarbonate, but all of that's gonna be hidden anyway, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. But I also need to drill 485 million tiny little holes in this one. And I also need to drill another hole in the back for where the pump is going to go. And that doesn't really matter where it is. I'll probably put it on this side since that's most likely where I will put the uh, the pump. But all of it's going to be hidden by a background, so it doesn't really matter. 
But I think before attaching these or after them, I don't know, really know what I'm going to do. But I'm going to drill the holes next and then I'll get to building the rest of the, uh, the chamber. Unlike I just said, I started with attaching the small little squares and then drilling the hole. In order to get the correct sized drill bit, however, to drill the holes, I broke open the airline tubing and then I found a drill bit that was about the same width as it and then I drilled a hole straight in the center of the back side of the polycarbonate. Okay, so I did decide to drill it in the middle and that's because I was just thinking about it. I want like a more even rain flow. So if I were to put it in the corner, you know, it would all come from that corner and kind of spread out, meaning there'd be heavier rain here and less here. And I'd, I'd rather have it in the back. That way it just, you know, it's a little more even. But I also attached the little squares and, you know, it fits on pretty well, actually. It doesn't slide around as much anymore. There's a little bit of wiggle room, which I wanted. I'm also going to put like a casing over this, probably with some paneling, like wood. But now the next step is to drill all of the tiny little holes, which is going to suck, but it needs to be done. And I don't really know what size I want. When I did the last one, that was one of the things I didn't like. I made the holes a little too big on accident and the rain flow was just, it was super heavy and fast. And I kind of don't want that. I kind of want to tone it back a little bit. So it's, you know, less crazy and more of that, like, just kind of drizzle type thing. So what I have here is this little cup thing. And uh, I'm going to drill some holes in this. And then I'm going to just put some water in it. Test out some different hole sizes. I'll probably start really small. Probably start out with, like, this little guy. Just the smallest one I have. Start testing out some of them and just see what I like the most. So, uh, let's do that. Okay, all of our little holes are drilled. This is the smallest one I have. I didn't do a whole lot. Now I'm just gonna put some water in this over the sink or something and see how I like the flow. If not, I'll just make the holes bigger until I get, uh, you know, what I want. Well, I think it's safe to say that was a success. I actually really like the, uh, the flow or rain speed, whatever you call it. Drip rate. I think I'm just gonna go with that drill bit for the whole thing. I did. So with that said, the next step is to take this drill and this bit and then uh, start drilling all 428 million of these holes. I'm excited. Okay, well that only took three hours. I'm kidding, it only took like 20 minutes. It's still kind of a pain, but next thing I need to do is cut like a little glass piece to go along this ridge right here. It's gonna have to go on top so it doesn't overlap. Um, and then we can start doing some test runs on the actual rain system to make sure it works before we go ahead with everything else. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut, cut the pieces of glass to size and then I'm gonna silicone them onto there. To make sure that the glass doesn't shatter while I cut it, I laid down a cloth and then the glass. Then I used a ruler and a glass cutter to cut the glass to the correct length. I then laid the glass next to the compartment where I marked for how long it needs to be. And then I cut along that line, then snapped it off. I then repeated this process three more times to get all four pieces. Yeah, okay. So now that all of our pieces are cut, we got the, the sides, front and the back. The next thing I need to do is use some painting tape and like stick them all together, um, you know, attach them. And then it's time for the silicone. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, as you can see here, we got it all silicone. All the edges are lined up. I'm gonna do multiple water tests on this. Um, just because if this part leaks, it's gonna cause issues. I just want everything going out the bottom. So I just gotta wait for this to dry. And while we're doing that, we can work on the scape. But before we do that, 
actually while we do that, we need to account for this little miniature adjustable pump that I got on the Amazons. This is the one that it is in case you guys want to get one that is the same or similar. So here's my plan. Come down here. So here is our tank. Now, again, I wanna put the pump, I think, here. I need to make a little box for this. And to do that, I have some of this stuff. This is like a corrugated plastic board. You can kind of see the little hills in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up some of these squares or cut some of these up into squares and then I'm gonna make a little box for that, cut some holes in it and then maybe fill it with mesh. Cause again, the whole like reason that I'm making the box is because I don't want, you know, like gravel and whatnot getting into the filter and clogging it up. So I'm gonna make a little box to separate the actual, you know, the pump from the actual substrate. That way I don't have that issue. Guys, look at Echo. Look how cute she is. She's just hanging from her little branch. Yes, she is. Judgmental stare much? Jeez. Sorry, I'll let you sleep. I'm sorry. I'll let you sleep. Bye-bye now. After Echo thoroughly judging me, I started by taking some measurements of the filter and then applying that to the corrugated plastic. I then cut some pieces with a laser blade to get the correct size. After that, I cut some smaller slits into the bottom of each piece. So our little pieces are done. I'll grab one of them here. They turned out pretty well, actually. Um, but I also attached this mesh so that, you know, we get not any substrate that falls in there. I'm just gonna silicone them like that. Um, I gotta cut a little thing so it is flush with the edge, but that way water can get in, but substrate can't. This will also make it to not only that substrate doesn't get in there, but it will also make it easier to service the pump in case, you know, I ever need to adjust the flow or just replace it, do pump maintenance. It'll be super easy to do because I can just take it out, be done with it. So uh, let's make us a box. So we got the box finished in there. Uh, looks pretty good, kind of messy again, but you know, I can uh, clean that up. This is, um, well, filter foam, AKA filter media. Um, it's in a, a bag right now, so I gotta get it open. Okay, it's open. This you can kind of see here, like the actual thickness of it. It's a lot thicker than this stuff, which is what I want, but my plan is to cut a sheet of this. I'm gonna, you know, get it all thickened first cut a sheet of this and i'm going to set it on the back there and then the plan is is to cut little slits in it that way i can put moss like cuttings in here um and it should you know it'll retain the moisture and then it'll also just allow the moss to kind of grow on this surface overall i think it'll work great so uh let's get it cut I got it cut, I got it in. This, like, it fits perfectly. And I honestly, if the moss grows well on this, I'm gonna use this a lot more often. But I do, I do need to make a few um, adjustments. I need to carve like a little notch into the back of that for the, uh, the airline tubing from the filter. And then I also have to make a little slit in the side for the cord. Subscribe. So the background is cut. Um, I I cut this like little slit. Hold on, that's gonna be nauseating. I cut this little slit. It's kind of hard to see, but it follows the pattern of this tube that runs out the top. I didn't want to have to permanently attach it to the back of this, but I might have to because like even though the cord fits like pretty perfectly in there, it still doesn't like get pressed flush up against the back, which isn't a big deal, but. I just want it like that. So I think what I might do is just do a little bit of super glue, honestly, um, and see if that works. So I gotta wait about 24 hours for that in the rain chamber to cure. But you know what? I don't like waiting. So let's just, 
Wow, that was cool. It is now the next day and our rain chamber is completely cured. So let's get the tape off and get a better look at this bad boy. Overall, it looks, it looks great. I mean, it's super light too, which wasn't intentional, but honestly, it's probably a good thing. I also want to make a small base for it, like a kind of thin little bottom piece just to kind of, you know, make it feel like one piece and bring the whole thing together. And then the, uh, the lid at the top, like I did the last one, will be containing, you know, the lights and then any other little, you know, whatever's I need in there. But before we do any of that, I'm going to do a quick water test on this piece just to make sure that it holds water and that, you know, it looks good just to make sure because I don't want to go forth with everything and then it sucks. Guys, it's working. I was scared for a sec because the pump looked like it wasn't gonna make it up to the top, but I had it on the lowest like flow option too. So, but I raised it up one more and it, it looks pretty good. The rain's not as like dispersed as I would like, I guess. And, but I, I could try turning it up one more, but I'm having a problem that I had with the last one, which is this tube right here. The problem I had with the last one was the fact that like, you know, I don't want it to splash up and just, you know, like, get everywhere but I might have an idea to fix that so my idea is basically to take probably another piece of either glass or polycarbonate and build almost like a little uh, like overflow kind of blocker I guess so then I'm like set that like in here and then maybe put some supports on it that way if we turn it up it like you can see it turned up now it's the the rain flow is a lot more dispersed it's kind of heavy on that side because that's where it is but you can see how much this comes up and I don't want that going everywhere. But other than that, I mean, the rain, the chamber's holding well. It's, you know, everything's dripping. Again, the water flow right now is a little bit like to the right, so it's heavier on that side. But this is kind of this effect over the whole thing is what I want. In order to make our little overflow blocker, I started by cutting a piece of glass that would cover the actual um, pump itself. And then I made some smaller pieces as supports that I then sanded. And then I siliconed everything to the canopy to make sure that it was secure. Okay, so our little overflow piece is finished. We got the little uh, little side supports, a little bit of mm, yummy. We got the little side supports. This should work pretty well. Got to wait for this to cure though. Um, so while we're doing that, we got to make the uh, the lid thingy for this. I want to build the like canopy for this, but I like it's going to be a pretty complex piece because. Again, this is gonna be like filled with water and I don't want that exposed to wood because again, like last time that's what happened and that's how the mold occurred. So I have another idea. So come with me, I wanna show you something. So this is dog food. This is a gloss clear spray paint that protects and revitalizes. Um, I've used this stuff on a few other projects before but this should protect the inside of it from the water and if it doesn't then I can take it off and redo it because I'm making the whole project that way so let's go back to the garage okay so we're back in the garage due to being back in the garage so now it's time to go back to the garage okay we're back in the garage so my plan in order to make the canopy and base is I started by taking some of this 1 8 inch thick plywood that I then cut into smaller pieces that would make up the canopy and the base. Once I had all of the pieces assembled, I gave them all a quick sand just so that they'd be a little more smooth. And then I took out some um, painting tape and then I assembled the whole thing. That way it'll just hold it in place while I use some super glue I'm using some cyan or acrylate super glue that I put along the edges. You also see that I added some small little support boards. Um, that was just cause it was a little flimsy and then I did some wood filler in the crates above and then I went and sanded that down so it didn't look all sharp and ugly. The bottom base was basically the same process except you know it was a little bit smaller and I didn't have to add the corner supports because it was you know a little more stable and then I added this leveling mat in there just to evenly distribute the weight. After that I coated everything in a walnut stain then I took it outside and applied the dog food. Three weeks, one sickness, and multiple package delays later, and we're back with the project. So here's the project at this point. Last thing we did was add the uh, 
the dog food to the this and the base and canopy. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is add the lights into here, cause I feel like that's a good place to start. And then after that, I think the background is probably gonna be the first thing we tackle. And then we'll do hardscape and plants and substrate and all that good stuff. So here are the lights I have. It's very easy to see what they are and what's going on in here. It's just three of these little uh, LED puck lights, but I'm gonna install these. I don't know if there's like screws or a little hook or something, or if I have to use super glue, but I'll just like do that but three times and then run the cord through there. Uh, we got the lights installed in the canopy. Luckily, they just came with some some sticky pad things. Um, but it's doing a pretty good job of lighting everything up. I mean, it's not like super bright. It's kind of hard to tell on the camera with all the other lights on. So the next thing we need to do is figure out this background. And if you remember, we have this little issue, you might call it, where the background doesn't like stay like it sits flush, but as soon as I let it go, it pops out. And even if this is going to stay in that position, like it still pops out. It has nothing to do with anything. Cause even if I move that back, you can see it still pops out. So it has everything to do with this slit. It's like causing the foam to bend. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and just super glue, probably just this top line here, just to hold that in place. And then the bottom kind of floppy, floppy outy now, but it'll, get pushed back by substrate and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and put some super glue along here, push this back, the filter and whatnots, everything's in place. So, uh, but then after that, I'm going to cut some slits in here and then we'll get the moss in place. So I got the duct tape off. I think it will hold. It seems fairly strong. I mean, I have this dangling back, so it's out of my way. Surprisingly, it's not breaking this part, but um, as you saw before, I cut a bunch of these little slits in here, and that's what I'm gonna do to stick the moss in, because I don't wanna have to worry about like tying it to this and whatnot. So I'm just gonna stick it in the little crake, and then um, moss. Here's the moss, and oh my God, it's so... It looks great. Like this is some of the best moss I've ever seen. So that's the next thing we need to do is uh, get the moss all uh, in here, get a good variety on there. And then after that, um, Now that that's out of the way, I was able to take the top thing off and I'll install that last, but the next thing we need to do is start the hardscape. And for that, I have some of these. And as you can probably see, they're quite messy. Um, and I don't want messy. Rocks. Okay, so they're all washed off. They look a little bit different colored now, but they'll look fine when they're done. But anywho's, um, the next thing we need to do is scape it. And I kind of have an idea. I kind of want to do like 
Like I mentioned earlier in the video, like the two island kind of look thing. I want to have a bit of a bigger one here and then one over there. But yeah, so that's the next thing I'm going to do. I think I'm going to put down some either egg crate if I have any left or some of that corrugated plastic um, just to evenly distribute the weight of the stones. I think either one will work fine. That way they don't crack the glass and it shatters in my face. So I kind of decided not to go with the island. I just didn't have enough room. Instead, I went with like a kind of snaking thing. You can kind of see it from an up angle, how it kind of, you know, curves. It'll create a little water reservoir down here and then some more land kind of centered there. I did pull a bit of moss out of the bottom just, you know, because I don't want it to drown. Um, it's a pretty simple scape right now. Obviously, there's not that many details in it. Um, I'll get those in after I get the, the substrate in, which is the next thing we need at D. I have some of this uh, Carib Sea Supernatural sand. It's like a white sand. Um, but I'm gonna use that for this front layer and then for the back. I am gonna top it with sand, but I'm gonna use some sea chem fluoride. This is pre-used, pre-washed and all that. This stuff is usually pretty bad when it comes to leaving tannins and whatnot in the water. So make sure you wash it out good if you're using it. I'm gonna do the hardscape after the substrate just cause I think it'll be easier. Um, Next thing to do is uh, add the substrate. <laughs> Well, that was easy. Now the substrate is in place. It looks pretty good. It looks kind of weird right now because it looks very continuous. Um, I gotta continue with the scape, just grab some of these smaller pieces and, you know, put them in places like that just to help raise it up a little bit. Um, and then I gotta put the moss on that layer. That layer is going to be kind of pretty much above the water. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna cover that whole area with moss. So I got the moss on, it looks good. I got the little detail rocks in the bottom to kind of make it a little bit of a smoother transition from, you know, the big, hard, you know, sharp looking rocks to the kind of softer sand area. I think the wood is really gonna help not only bring the whole piece together, but just kind of break up those textures and colors. And speaking of wood, this is the wood that I'll be using. This stuff, this is called tiger wood, and this is a type of wood that I have been waiting to use for years. I have like, I've come across it so many times and it's such a cool piece. You can see all of the like little details and little gnarly bits. I've seen it so many times, but I've never been able to find the right pieces for the projects that I want or just enough of them. But I finally am able to use tiger wood. Not really sure how I want to escape it, if I want to go like kind of more root-like or if I want to go more of like an, a tree-like. Not really sure, but that's the next step. We got to put in the wood. Well, 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 this scape is great. I absolutely love this wood, just the look of it. It's so like gnarly and like viney. I decided to go with more of that rooting look. The piece just fit in here like this the best. I also added, as you saw, some little bits here and there, kind of 
add on to the wood. Um, but the next thing we need to do is add the planes. So I have some aquatic plants, just some smaller ones, um, some Anubias non petites, which are going to be probably on the wood. And then I've just got a few little ferns and ivies. I also do have some ficus left that I'm gonna put in there. But that's the next thing to do is um, add the plants and then, you know, any little bits of moss. And then um, fill it up with water and turn it on. So let's get this thing finished. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had such a fun time with this project. I know it took a while to get out just because of, you know, all that crap that happened, but it's a very special project to me, like I said, because this was kind of, you know, my first really big video on YouTube and also my first project attempting something like this. So to be able to make another one and learn from my mistakes like that and make something that I think is way better than the first one is just an incredible experience. I really love the way this turned out. I think it's up there with one of the best projects I've made. One thing I feel like a lot of my projects lack is like that that small detail type deal, like all the little tiny, tiny details. Like I know I do stuff like botanicals and leaf litter and whatnot, but like the really tiny details. But that's going to do it for this week again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Um, I really appreciate the support on the last video. It was a little bit different from what I normally do, so I really appreciate to see a little bit of, a little bit of support coming from that. Let me know what you think about this project. Is it an improvement from the last one? Let me know down in the comments. But uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week.